All right, welcome everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to talk about the DCS F-16 and speeds to fly. So we're gonna talk a little bit about angle of attack, takeoff, climb, cruise, a little explanation and demonstration of true airspeed and why it's advantageous to fly high when you're cruising in a jet. Um, and a little bit about corner speed and dogfighting and maneuvering. All right, so when we, for takeoff, uh, one thing I just want you to pay attention to right here on the HUD, this is the boresight cross, and I'm gonna use that to set the takeoff attitude. So we'll go ahead and take off full afterburner. Airspeed's alive, nose wheel steering's off. About 150 knots, I'm gonna ease the stick back. I'm gonna set about 11 degrees nose up on the with the boresight cross. All right, positive rate, gear's coming up. Going out of afterburner at 300. I'm going to continue to accelerate and note down here that the fuel flow is increasing as I accelerate to 350 knots for climb. So the faster we fly, the more power we generate. So that's why we want to climb at kind of a higher airspeed. All right, here's a quick demonstration of true airspeed. So one thing uh, when you're when you're cruising around in the F-16, uh, this, this holds true for any aircraft, the fuel flow, that's kind of what I use as a primary means to set power. Um, one thing to remember, one rule of thumb, is that no matter what altitude you're at, this uh, for a given configuration with the same stores and everything, a fuel flow should result in the same airspeed no matter what altitude you're at. And that airspeed we're talking about is here see the C, that's calibrated airspeed. So when I'm flying around, I kind of like to get in my head a number of fuel flow that's going to get me in the low 300s, which is kind of like a efficient cruising speed. And basically anytime I'm transiting from one area to the other or I'm finished maneuvering, um, I'm going to pull the throttle back to that fuel flow. And that's simply uh, it's just a quick way for me to save gas. I know exactly where to set the fuel flow. I just set it there every time. Um, if you get in the habit of doing that, you're going to find that you can really save fuel in this plane, and um, you know you'll, you'll just be using a lot less fuel. A lot of times, I fly in the I don't know the growling sidewinder, the open conflict server. I see people with all kinds of bags hung on their plane, and the reality is, for like that type of mission, you don't need all that gas if you know how to conserve it. So that's one thing to do is just whenever you don't need to be, you know, wasting fuel, just have a fuel flow number that works that'll put you in the low 300s and just set it there every time. All right, so this is a quick demonstration of uh, true airspeed. We'll talk about that real quick. Uh, so at low altitudes, our calibrated airspeed here on the aircraft, this is, this is often referred to as smash. This is what the plane feels in resistance as it's going through the air. Uh, so that's, you know, that that resistance also equals basically like felt airflow over the airfoils. So um, the angle of attack, et cetera, um, you know, for a given calibrated airspeed, it, it's gonna be the same regardless of altitude. So if I'm at 25,000 feet, I have 320 knots here. I'm gonna be at the same angle of attack here as I would be down here at 5,000. What's different? Um, so true airspeed. True airspeed is, is really, if, if you think of calibrated airspeed as smash or what the plane feels, true airspeed is actually the speed at which, if you were to look at an individual air molecule, that's the speed at which it's zipping over your wing, it's zipping by at whatever the true airspeed is. Um, the reason it's felt differently at different altitudes by the aircraft is because up higher it's less dense, so those air molecules are farther apart. Um, they're zipping by at the same, sorry, they're zipping by, they have to zip by faster up at the higher altitude to give you this same calibrated airspeed or airspeed that's felt by the plane. Um, so in our F-16, we actually have a little output for true airspeed. Uh, true airspeed, another good way to wrap your head around that is if there's no wind, okay, true airspeed is always gonna equal your ground speed. So that's how fast you're moving over the ground if there's no wind is true airspeed. 
All right, low altitude, 5,000 feet. Our calibrated airspeed is going to be pretty close to true, right? Because it's calibrated, basically, it's essentially sea level, right? At sea level, calibrated airspeed should equal true airspeed. Um, the higher up you go, the higher true airspeed you get for the same calibrated airspeed. Because that air is less dense, you have to be going faster through it to feel the same resistance. So down here, we have a switch. We have true airspeed, and I actually have this bound. True. 354 true. 330 calibrated. So we're not quite at sea level, so we've got a little, we're going a little bit faster. Um, because we're up at 5,000 feet, they're slightly less dense. So calibrated 326, true 352. All right, now we're going to climb up to 25,000 feet. And by the way, note our fuel flow here, about 5,500 pounds to do 326 knots. So in just a second, we'll climb up to 20, 25,000 feet and take a look at that. All right, so here we are, level 25,000 feet. 320 knots calibrated airspeed, 321 at that same fuel flow, 5,500 pounds per hour. So doesn't matter what altitude you're at, you're gonna get the same calibrated speed for the same fuel flow. Um, what changes at altitude? True airspeed. So in order to get this calibrated speed, in order to get this felt resistance against the plane, I have to be going a lot faster. So that, that helps me in terms of um, getting better fuel economy if I'm trying to go from place to place. So if we just check out the true speed here, True speed is now 461 knots. So we've picked up quite a bit of speed. So we're doing 461 knots true airspeed. That means 460 knots over the ground with no wind. And our calibrated airspeed is 320. And we're doing the same fuel flow to do that same calibrated speed as we were down low. So I hope that makes sense. That's just a quick little explainer of true airspeed uh, and why, why we want to fly high in jets. I've heard. Lots of different answers on that. People say, oh, the engine's more efficient, all this stuff. Really, you get the same indicated or calibrated speed for the same fuel flow regardless of altitude. It's just the higher you are, the faster you're going over the ground to get that same airspeed because there's less resistance. All right, cruise altitude. So if you're heavy loaded up with bombs and fuel, low 20s, that's going to be a good target for type of missions we do in DCS with short, you know, 60 to 100 mile transits between waypoints. We're not, we don't need to get the max performance out of it. I know when the uh, the new pages come out here, we'll have cruise page and all that stuff. It's going to give you a range in an economy. Um, those are going to probably be like pretty low speeds, pretty high altitudes, but those represent like absolute max performance numbers. Um, you know, that at, in the low 20s when we have all these bombs and stuff, uh, it's better to be down here a little bit. The, air, the aircraft has some excess power. If we go way up this heavy, you know, with 30,000 30, feet with all these bombs and tanks on the plane, we're going to have no excess power. I mean, we're going to be just kind of like hanging on by a thread. Right now, I'm kind of cruising around at 5,500 pounds an hour, and if I want to, without going into afterburner, I can add quite a bit of power down here. So I still have, I still have room. Basically, I, I can get excess power if I need it to maneuver so um, you know that that's helpful just depending on what you're doing so yeah cruise altitude low 20s if you're loaded up high 20s low 30s if you're light all right so I'm gonna talk just briefly on maneuvering and corner speeds so if you're down low maneuvering uh, let's say you're maneuvering to attack a target or you're you know, maybe you're tooling around in the hills in one of the multiplayer missions and you're trying to stay away from some bad guys. Um, I like to keep my speed below 600. So 550, 560, somewhere around there is a good speed to do that. You're going fast enough that any of those short range, um, I guess, uh, surface to air threats, they can't really get at you. Um, the IR, the shoulder launch missions have a hard time finding you at that speed. The AAA does as well. Uh, but you're slow enough that you can actually maneuver the aircraft. So um, I'll just sort of demonstrate what I mean here. So at 550, what I can do, if I need to, I can quickly 
bleed my speed down to my corner speed. Take advantage of that instantaneous turn. And get down to... Eh, I've been using about 420 for a corner speed. So the max rate of the plane. Somewhere around there. Don't want to go get too much below 400. So corner speed is going to be like the max sustained turn rate of the aircraft. Anywhere between like 420 and 450 seems to be about right for the F-16. Um, I've played around with this some in uh, TAC view. And that's what I found works best. It's different depending on configuration and altitude, but that's kind of my go-to speed. Um, I'll demonstrate real quick why staying below 600 is, is kind of important. So. We're gonna this you know the plane's obviously capable of going well past 600 knots. I'm all blown off all the tanks and everything. All right, so here's 650. I can't turn. See how slow my turn is? And see how long it's taking me to bleed speed off? It's taking me forever. So if somebody popped up on me at that airspeed, I just have trouble um, actually maneuvering the plane. So it's beneficial to be a little bit slower. Somewhere in the mid 500s is a little bit better. That way you can actually bleed speed off, get to where you want to be. One more uh, tip I thought I'd mention. So you have your flight path marker right here and your bore sight cross. Uh, this is a really handy way to tell what your angle of attack is. As you see, there's nothing in the HUD that tells you angle of attack, um, but you do have this um, this right here, so you can see the distance between the horizon and the boreside cross. Looks like it's about three degrees, right? Here's five, looks like about three. If you come down here to your angle of attack, yep, sure enough, right? Three degrees, right on it. So this distance here between your flight path marker and the boreside cross will give you angle of attack. Um, one area that might be helpful, let's say you're maneuvering and you get slow. And you need to pick speed up real quick. Use that flight path marker, put it on your boresight cross to go kind of zero G, zero angle of attack, and you'll accelerate really fast. Watch. Look at that speed. There we go, now we're back at our maneuvering speed. We're a little above it, actually, but that's all right. 